Hey everyone, Bran here. Welcome to this week's garden update where we're going to take a look at some of the plants that I've put in the ground over the last few days and as well as that I want to check out some of the delicious food that's ready to harvest here in the garden. So please sit back, relax for a few minutes and let's get into it now. I had about an hour free this week to get some plants into the ground and this is where I spent most of my time down here by the entryway to the raised beds I put in those Shasta daisies and Russian sage I made a decision down here which I'm not 100% happy with but I felt like I didn't have much of a choice so I have left the weed mat covering the ground and then what I did up in this space was I just cut some holes to pop the plants in. The reason why I feel like I've got no other option but to use this is because I feel like weed mat was the only barrier that I could put in place to stop the mint from taking over this area. And behind them in this raised bed, remember I had the ranunculus? There's a little bit... <laughs> Of those plants left but most of them have been removed and I decided to put in these overwintered Rebecca plants. They're also known as black-eyed Susan. I placed six in this spot. I still need to come in here and cut off the old stems from last year but as you can see they have started to put up some lovely green foliage from the base and I'm pretty confident that each of these six plants is going to do well here. Having taken a step back, this is my vision. Hopefully it'll work out so you'll have a bit of a drift here of the lovely large Shasta Daisy white flowers. Behind them you'll have the tall spikes of the Russian sage which will be a blue colour and then behind them there will be a mixture of yellow and bronze flowers which will be quite large and I think that will make a nice combination and I actually was thinking I might put some snapdragons in this space too yeah any suggestions i just want them to be full of color i planted out these two containers with my dwarf bean seedlings which i showed you last week they're a variety called golden wax i need to give them a water they're looking a little bit stressed out some of the leaves are curling and they feel very limp i wouldn't blame them though it's pretty hot out today i do have a few seedlings left over that i want to try and find a spot for as much as it is tempting to just squish them all in here I'm not going to do it and let me explain why in the past I discovered if I try and cram too many bean plants into a smaller space they just don't do as well I find it can lead to smaller yields poor quality products the plants can be overcrowded and then you end up seeing lots of disease on them. So now I try and give them the space that the experts recommend so that these lovely plants can grow to their full potential, getting plenty of airflow and hopefully produce a lot of food for us. This summer, as many of you already know, we are renovating, which means we're actually losing a large part of our garden. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a lot more emphasis on growing my edibles and flowers in containers. And I haven't shown you these three pots yet. In them, I have two of these sweet bullhorn chili plants and one capsicum plant. They've been in these containers for a couple of weeks now and they have grown quite a bit in size. In this container, I'm growing Kiffler potatoes, which look like they're almost ready to harvest. So a telltale sign that your potatoes are ready is when you start to see leaves yellowing and going limp and dying back, which is exactly what's happening here. I also know with this variety that from the time it takes you to plant your seed potato to when it's mature and ready to pick is approximately 90 to 100 days which I think roughly is how long they have been in here. What I'm going to do now is have a little sneak peek and see if you can find any potatoes but oh look I didn't even have to go far. Oh beautiful. So Kiffler potatoes people don't know specifically where they come from but I believe it's either Austria or Germany and I do know they're popular in those two countries as well as the Czech Republic oh I can't believe oh look there's more of them 
oh I don't have time to empty the whole bag out today but next week I might just tip all of this out and we'll do a little check and see how many we can pick I've come back over to the shade I'm not gonna go digging around there anymore this is enough for today I just wanted to take a little sneak peek as I had already said so I love growing Kifler potatoes for couple of different reasons I guess the main one obviously is that I think they just taste delicious and they're very versatile I do like using them to make potato salads I find them I don't know if this is the right description or if I'm even saying this correctly but I find them to be kind of waxy firm potatoes and that's why I think they are really nice in that dish now the other thing I wanted to say as well is that I grow these because they are so expensive to buy like although they're common to purchase in some countries in Europe like I've just mentioned over here they seem to be considered like a gourmet potato and I'm not sure why exactly because they're very easy to grow anyway there you go a little mini harvest for today I noticed over here in the rainbow charred patch that some of the plants are starting to bolt meaning it's going to flower to set seed this usually happens in response to warmer weather or changes in daylight hours once it starts to bolt the leaves can become bitter i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to harvest all of the stems and because there's so much here we're not going to be able to eat it within a week so i may end up preserving some of it so that we can enjoy it over the next few months usually how i preserve rainbow charge look at this one beautiful orange stem so pretty what i do is i blanch the leaves and then i put them into airtight ziploc bags and place them in the freezer and they last a good few months but this year i'm thinking of trying something different where i'm going to can the leaves and all that involves is again you know washing cleaning the leaves placing them into some jars and then pouring a warm broth over the top or brime I should say and that should also stay preserved for a few months I haven't tried that method before so I'm looking forward to giving it a go and I really want to be able to share more of my recipes and preserving methods with you so I'm hoping I get something recorded for you next week I'm back over in the shade I'll leave them here for the moment while I'm showing you around because I don't want them to wilt and actually I'm also thinking I want to use up the stems too so the plan is I might do a few jars of pickled vegetables because I do have a lot of cold hardy veggies like this kohlrabi that needs to come out as well as lots of beetroot and out the back there's carrots too so I think they'd make a nice bit of a combination for pickled veggies which I can use when we're having our cheese and crackers or just other little snack dishes I was thinking I wonder if you can pickle kale mm, don't know how that would go but I do need to harvest all my kale as well and preserve it because it's too hot for these plants now all these cold hardy plants I need to pull a lot of them out I want to show you one last edible crop that's starting to produce which is this the purple sprouting broccoli this plant is in the brassica family so the entire thing is edible just like broccoli itself the leaves the stem but what this one does is it puts out all of these side shoots with lovely clusters of little purple florets and so easy to harvest you just like snap it off super crunchy you could even just eat it fresh out of the garden like that actually whenever I do show people you know me eating straight from the garden it can be a little bit controversial some people say oh you have to wash it first but I don't stress out too much if it's just for myself I don't wash it because I know we don't use any chemicals here what are you what do you guys think don't want to cause drama in the comment section but would you wash your veggies if it was just for yourself do you snack out in the garden I'd love to hear from you you can see with this plant itself the heat is getting to it because I noticed some of these little small florets are starting to open up and bloom can't even see the lens is so bright out so I should also pick this one off too now I'm sure 
I know, I was going to say I'm sure, but I know most of you already know that you can still eat this even when it begins to flower. It's still super tasty. Speaking of flowers, I'm very nervous walking around here because of the snakes and it's really overgrown but not with weeds as such. This is a lovely blue salvia. It's just shooted up from the ground. I do enjoy this plant, so I'll probably leave it be. But as you can see, it's in the area where I planted all of the foxgloves. Look at them. They're in bloom. A few different shades of pink and a lovely purple one over there. So happy with that. And I know there's plenty more on the way. And of course, I do show you all the beautiful things in the garden, but there's also a lot of areas that haven't worked out. So this is where I had the row of sweet peas and there's nothing. Obviously, I didn't maintain it. There's weeds like grass growing all through it. I can't even see the plants. So there's a little bit of one. It's just stunted, hasn't grown at all. Such a shame, but I don't know what to do. I might just pull these out. <laughs> well, there's not many of them. Pull them out and put something else in its place. Some kind of climbing plant. Or I could even just take the whole trellis out, clear this area, and maybe put in that corn that I showed you last week. Seeing that is certainly a reminder that not everything goes to plan in the garden, which is pretty normal. And all I can do is learn and grow from it. Anyway, I better head off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week and happy gardening.